and all. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the May educational session. We are going to be doing a conversation about planning fees uh, and how they interact with us as travel advisors and how we can maximize our business with them. Um, as we go through, we have some questions that we're going to kind of pose this as a panel type of thing. Uh, but if you have questions as we go on how to implement them, or if you have specific questions about anything related to the topic, please add it to the Q&A box. If you are watching this as a recording, uh, please send an email to myself or Sheila, and I'll have that information in the description of the video below. Uh, if you all don't know me, I'm Scott Wismont, the owner of Rainbow Getaways. I am the YPS representative on the Central Florida the chapter board, which is always a mouthful to say. Um, but that also, in addition to educational sessions, I help organize all the other webinars and kind of do the webmaster stuff. Uh, but joining me is Sheila, uh, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hey guys, I already had a message come through. Hi, Kimberly. We haven't talked in a while. I am Sheila Folk. I am uh, the owner of an Ultralux private jet uh, travel agency that I am currently segueing out of because I am also the CEO and founder of Travel Industry Solutions. I see that we have a couple of members, TIS members on the call. I've been in the business for about five and a half years, but prior to that, I spent 20 years as uh, uh, executive in executive management for global hospitality brands, as well as did a five-year stint in the risk management space. And I am a huge believer in fees, 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 all across the board. I mean, you've got to charge fees. So um, it's scary though, when you first start, you don't know what to do or how people are going to react to you. But I promise you, you can charge them. You can charge thousands in fees. Uh, you can charge change fees, cancellation fees. So we're going to talk about that today. And I really appreciate you uh, inviting me here today, Scott. Yes, I'm glad we can have this conversation because there's a lot of questions that are always out there about planning fees. When to start charging them? Can we charge them because we're in Florida? Uh, and we'll talk about all that as we go. Um, if you all haven't already figured out today's sessions about planning fees, um, we're going to be talking about planning them, charging them, cancellation fees, and we'll try to approach this from a holistic standpoint, uh, because while both of us are pro-planning fees, there is an argument that can be made for not charging them. So we'll try to talk about that too, so that everybody that is watching can walk away informed so that they can make the best decision for their agency. Uh, but the first argument or the first side of the coin that I want to look at is charging non-refundable planning fees. So Sheila, what's one of the main advantages of charging a non-refundable fee? Oh gosh, there's a lot, but I would say financial stability, you know, for all of us who were around during the COVID uh, crisis, who had our agencies and we were really like rolling in it and we are the bookings were plentiful and, you know, you, you couldn't step out on a street corner without bumping into somebody who wanted to be your client and then boom, the world stopped it really wreaked a lot of havoc with agents who were not charging fees at the time. So financial stability to me is first and foremost, you know, I, I don't know about you, Scott, but um, I don't provide travel services out of the goodness of my heart. Um, I do have to put food on my table. And so the financial stability of knowing that I'm collecting those fees along the way is really, really important to me. And I always say for new advisors, you know, it takes so long to build up your client base. You may book a half a million dollars in your first year or $250,000 in your first year, but it doesn't mean that you're going to realize those commissions in your first year. So how are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to put food on your table or buy those 
crazy expensive Nike high top shoes that all the teenagers have today. Financial stability is is probably one of my biggest drivers. I, what do you what would you say it is for you? The financial stability was really what pushed me over finally of having money now. Like as JJ Wentworth yeah. always says, we need money. And waiting until it travels six months, 12 months, 24 months down the road, while it's great for the future, that two or $3,000 commission check is always nice to get. It doesn't help cover the operational expenses of the business. It doesn't help cover the living expenses that you have as an advisor for your own personal life. Because if this is your sole income, which many of us, it either is, or we want it to be, that's going to give us that freedom to be able to break away from the W-2 job to be able to focus on our business full time. And then the other side of it is I really use it a lot to get rid of tire kickers. People yeah. that are just shopping around, they want you to do hours worth of work to prepare for their proposal so that then they can take that proposal and book it themselves, take that proposal and compare it to what another travel agent gets. When I'm hiring a new client, and I use that phrasing specifically, I'm hiring them to plan their trip, just like they're hiring me to plan it. And it's a two-way street. I'm not going to work with everybody. And this is an easy way to mitigate the people that are just going to take advantage of what you're doing. And you know what? <laughs> this is a really funny story. I was just saying this to our members on the onboarding call that I had an, uh, an hour ago. I had a client and I really wanted to get rid of her. I just really did. And you know, I've told you this, that I've been phasing out my clients, but I just socked her with the highest planning fee possible. And I'm not kidding. You know what she wanted for her trip? An mm -hmm. Ama Waterways cruise in a pre and post. So I shot her an invoice for $1,500 for a planning fee, okay? Just to see if she would do it. And you know what? She paid it. And so you'll be surprised what people are willing to pay. And my first reaction was, oh, no, I <laughs> want to take care of her now. You know? And so it's so scary when you first dip your toe in that water. And when you're really confident in what you bring to the table, it definitely, definitely comes through. And, you know, the other thing, too, is it, it protects you and mitigates those financial risks associated with the cancellation or changes, although we're going to talk about change and cancellation fees. Uh, but I agree with you. So the financial stability, the commitment to seriousness, I believe and for any of you guys who actually know me and you've been to some of my talks and, you know, we're friends, you know that I am crazy um, obsessed about operational efficiency and how time is money. And so for me, by charging a fee, clients are more likely to be committed to the planning process. And it really does reduce the number of frivol frivolous inquiries. And I know you've heard that, uh, but what's important for me, and I think really important for other agents to think about when they're considering implementing fees, is that you only have so much time in your day. And you need to allocate your resources appropriately. I get it when you're new, you're hungry, you want to invite those uh, prospects in without fees. It's a great learning experience to plan out those trips and understand how you could maybe improve your, your own processes or the discovery call that you did with them. But if you're really focused and you don't want to become a slave to your business. And let's face it, we do it naturally because we work out of our homes, most of us. You've got to think about how you're going to weed out the customers that are serious and those that aren't serious. Um, otherwise, you are going to have no freedom in your life and very little profit 
and just work yourself to death. So yeah. I believe the commitment to seriousness is pretty important. And also the value perception. I think value perception is key, especially as you start moving into the premium and the luxury space that becomes really um, critical. And listen, you can create a sense of urgency through your word or through your words, through your communication. You can uh, create sense of urgency simply by saying, I have a seven day wait until I can tackle your trip. That creates urgency, even if you're lying. I mean, <laughs> you know, yep. even if you're, I shouldn't say lying, okay? Even if you're exaggerating a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it does create value around you as an advisor. I don't know. I, listen, you can agree or disagree, but it's worked for me. And I've helped other agents to move into that space. And they're like, holy cow, like I literally am making enough in fees right now to meet my mortgage payment or mm -hmm. to pay for two weeks of groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's the guaranteed income. It's the getting rid of the tire kickers for me. And then um, along with that, it's also going to give me or gives me the ability to kind of explain how my relationships work with all of the suppliers. Um, the example that I've actually started using that people understand is like, I'm the general contractor for a house. I'm not the one that's going to provide the accommodations. I'm not the one that's driving the car for the transfers. I'm working with the right people to pull them together to build the trip. And whether that's a DMC, a tour operator, or going full old school FIT, building it all manually, it's a lot easier for them to understand. And just like with the general contractor for the house, uh -huh. you're going to pay that person on top of the actual suppliers. And once I started using that example, all of the pushback that I received from the ones that were on the fence dropped off. And so now I still just get the ones, oh, you want me to pay a fee before you do any work? Yes. Oh, you're not right for me. Well, I'm not right for you either. So have a nice well, life. I love that analogy. That's really good. And it is so on point, really. Yeah. I love that. Now, I, if I were still taking on uh, new <laughs> clients, I would definitely use that. <laughs> yeah, so y'all are welcome to steal it. Like it's it, it's worked. Like, and it's an easy thing that everyone can relate to. Uh, because most people have gone through some form of remodel for their house or building it, or they know people who have and the pains of finding general contractors that are good. Yeah. Uh, now, moving into kind of a related topic, but a little bit different. How has charging fees affected your business and just customer relationships in general? Well, I definitely think that they value um the they value me more it allows me though to really give them the attention that they deserve it motivates me to want to do that um it strengthens it strengthens my relationship with them obviously it's increased my revenue exponentially but they equate and especially kind of now in the space that I'm at they 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 realize that I'm on their side actually regardless of what type of trips you plan your customers want to know that you're on their side not yeah. somebody else's side and so when they know you're you're on their side uh that you now have the time to commit to them and give them the attention that they deserve. It does strengthen your relationships um, really immediately. At least that's what it's done for me and my business. And now that my customers are used to paying fees, they don't hesitate when a special request comes up or a change or a cancellation or whatever it is. They don't hesitate and they don't flinch when I let them know there's an additional charge. They respect my time. Yeah. And just like one thing that I noticed almost immediately was they became more loyal uh, because 
like they're building that relationship with you. Like they're paying for your time. And so they're invested in it to get to know you as a person. And it's created a more loyal situation for me where I'm booking more repeat clients than I did before the fee. And um, it's worked out really well. And like, I know all of their likes and their dislikes and trips are a lot easier the second or third or fourth time around than they are the first time. And you're still trying to figure out how each other's work and what they like, what they don't like, because people will tell you they like caviar, but they really don't. Um, so. Well, also uh, the, the perception of professionalism. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you and I were just talking before everybody got on the call and uh, I have sort of an analogy when I speak to agents who don't have systems or their business set up properly or whatever. I always ask them, are you playing business or are you in business? And there's a difference. If you are just dipping your toe in the water and you're just kind of figuring things out, but that you're not really committed. So you're either a business owner or you're pretending to be one. And your clients see that too. There's a definite line in how they view you in your professionalism. I'm not saying that you have to charge fees to be viewed as a professional, but it does change the tone a little bit. And it's really enhanced the quality of client that I have that has led to better quality clients and more quality clients. So it's not just my income or the commitment that I now have for my current clients. It's leading me to better clients. Yep. So yeah. it really does have a domino effect. It does. And if you get a client that has more discretional income that can pay a planning fee without really thinking about it, they typically are easier to work with because they're not second guessing every single penny that you're spending for them um, or they have higher budgets now but not necessarily a rule that applies to everybody however that's one commonality that I have found across all of the people that I work with since starting to charge planning fees just over two years curious ago. to know Scott on the call how many people attending the call right now are charging fees Type it in the chat, uh, raise your hand. It would be really great to know how many are charging fees. And then I'm gonna have another question after this. Okay, so we've got quite a bit that are charging fees. Some are not consistent. I'm just starting out. Dipping your toe in the fee pool. Oh, I remember when I did that. Yeah, I'll tell you how I dipped my toe in that pool. I'll give you a couple of little tips too. Um, Rebecca, oh, we'll talk about we'll, we'll talk about that. Not, yeah, it's not it's not next. I'm in Florida. It's not next to impossible. Uh, thinking about starting. Okay. Now, if you could lower your hand and then raise your hand if you're not charging fees and you will never charge fees. Okay. Uh, How about just not charging fees at all? Yeah, who's not charging fees yet? Okay. Okay, so we still have a few in here that aren't. Yeah, no. And so it's a good, y'all have a good mix, um, which I do want to touch on Rebecca's comment here about Florida. We are going to talk about this in detail because everyone in this call should be from Florida or they know somebody from Florida where they got invited to. Um, so it is very possible because we're making our money off of fees. Um, but we'll talk about how to do that here in a little bit after a few more questions. Yeah. Um, I, now, I, I'll tell you what, I don't want to derail you, but I, I wanted to talk about change and cancellation fees for a second. Oh, that's good. Because I was going to actually bring that up here. 
Go for it. Or do you want do you want to talk about the opposing view, Scott? Because listen, I can talk about the opposing view too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's let's do that. Let's talk about the case against fees first. Um, and then we'll get into some other case because I had a good example of cancellation fees that I was dying to say. Um, all right. So for people who don't charge planning fees, uh, I'll give you my reason and then you can okay. tell me if you've heard others. So one of the reasons that I hear most often or even what prevented me from doing it early on uh, was the number of travel advisors that are out there that don't charge fees. Yeah. Uh, I see it on my Facebook page daily. I unfollow it every time, but I see it daily of somebody sharing a video, sharing something about Disney or cruises or whatever, book with me because I do it for free or whatever their catchphrase is. Um, and so that's a barrier to entry for a lot to overcome because there are a lot of options out there. And so that's like yeah. or even some of my ICs, that was their reason initially. Yeah, I mean, competitive disadvantage is a, a real thing for travel agents. You know, they feel like in, in a market where so many don't charge fees, that potential clients may be more inclined to choose agencies that don't require those upfront payments. And that can feel really scary. I mean, super scary. And that's how I felt in the beginning. Also, uh, it may deter clients who want more flexibility or um, feel reluctant to pay for a service that they perceive as an intangible until the trip is confirmed. Yep. I would say the third thing is refund expectations. I don't know if you've come across this, Scott, before you started charging fees, but even with a clear policy, some clients may still expect refunds leading to potential disputes or negative online reviews, et cetera. So, you know, agents have shied away from it because they don't want to have those negative experiences. And they're all really, really valid reasons. Everybody needs to run their business the way that they feel good about it, uh, whether you charge them or not charge them. I think from my perspective, I'm just here to say that it is possible you won't uh, lose clients by charging fees you'll actually gain better clients mm -hmm. and more quality in your life at the same time. That's been my experience. Now, if you're dealing with customers who maybe you book a lot of cruises, it's really hard to be competitive in the cruise space unless your host or your consortia has a significant number of uh cruise group spaces on many, many sailings or added amenities. But there is a way that you can be competitive and charge fees. So for example, uh, I do about 50% cruises in my agency. If somebody comes to me and wants me to research, let's say five cruises, the way that I go about it is I charge them a nominal planning fee to cover my time. Let's say $100. It's non-refundable. However, when they travel, I will apply a $50 shipboard credit to, um, to their uh, shipboard account. A lot of times that's being offset by consortia or host agency amenities or if it's, you know, a more premium or luxury sailing, I'll get my BDM to offset that for me. So there are ways that you can uh, stay competitive in a market like cruises where the price is the price, unless you have cruise group space, Yeah. then cover your time. And then on the back end, let's say you don't want to charge fees up front and then kick back shipboard credits or maybe a hotel credit or something like that, doing a change or a cancellation fee. You don't have the money up front, but you do protect your time that you spent in the beginning. You know, I tell a lot of our members, 
when they're filling out our terms and conditions and we get to the change and cancellation fee section is put something in there. You can always waive it for great customers, but you can't go back retroactively to that client that tied you to their truck bumper, drug you through the mud, stomped on your hair and kicked out your two front teeth. And now they want to cancel on you. So if you do like a $25 per person per component, at least you um, are protecting your time and recovering some of that lost commission. So there are ways if you don't want to charge the fee up front to recover on the back end or make it feel enticing to the customer up front if you are quoting a product that is competitive and readily available through online booking sources. So that's yeah. that's how I feel about it. Yeah, and uh, I kind of have the same process for cruises myself. Um, if it's one of my big three, I don't typically charge a fee for them, mainly because I don't need to. These I do volume in there and I can get a booking done in five minutes. Like as soon as they give me their forms right. and travel joy, it's done. Um, so it really doesn't take much research. I know where the ships are. I know what the cabins are. Like It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But if somebody comes to me and says, I want to cruise, but I don't know what I want to do. And I actually have to think about it. Right. Then I charge them a fee. It starts out at fifty dollars for two options, and if they want two more, then it's another fifty, uh, because I'm investing time in it. And when I first set up my fee structure a couple of years ago, what I did was I took the number of hours that I worked on an average trip and just divided it out. And I found that, depending on the complexity, somewhere between five and fifteen hours would be a normal dedicated time. And so I set 10 hours and I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to charge them $50 an hour because I'm not at that level yet. But I started out at 20 and I said $200, um, which I've raised my fees since. And it's probably going to go up again by the end of this year or next year, just because of inflation. But like, that's how I got to it. And then the cruising, same kind of concept, like depending on how complex it is, depends on what it is. And then I have my, um, before you jump into that thought, I have my group contracts. Like if I've got a large group coming to me, you're talking at least $2,000, if not upwards of 10. Like it just depends on how complex that group is because they take a lot of time, a lot of time. They do. But you know, you were just talking about how much you charge and, and you were thinking about increasing your charges. And one of the common things that I see travel agents make, which I think is really a mistake, is they ask other travel agents what they charge and what they should be charging. And it doesn't really matter what other agents are charging. Mm -mm. You need to put a value on you and your time. So What's the complexity of the trip? What's the time and effort involved? What's your knowledge level and expertise and your rep reputation? Uh, what's the market demand and competition? So you have to evaluate that. Certainly you can use benchmarks, but you're going to find it's all across the board. Yeah. No, all it is. across the board from $50 to $10,000. I mean, it's it's not a one size fits all. So if you're thinking about charging non-refundable planning fees, take into consideration all of those things, your expertise and reputation, your time, the complexity, the market demand, the competition, and it's okay to ease into it. Mm -hmm. you, you might have to kind of play around and see what people think you're worth in some ways, if that makes sense? Or what does your particular market, uh, what can it command? You know, maybe you live in a small town and most of your clients are local and it's, it's a blue collar manufacturing town. So there's a, there's a lot of factors to consider. Yeah. So 
you know, move into it slowly. Yeah. And one of my ICs, when she started charging, she did $50 a trip because she's in a small town up in the north-ish area. And she didn't think it could support it, which she started getting bookings, continued getting them. She ended up raising her fee because she found that people were willing to pay it. So you don't have to start out at a $200, a $500, or a $1,000 fee. You can start out with a small amount to get your bearings with it, get your processes in place. And then when you're ready to increase it, you can. Uh, There isn't a one-size-fits-all tool that works for any of this. Um, which before we go into the next topic that I really wanted to cover, uh, when do you usually waive your fees? So I have, I, even though I don't book a lot new clients anymore, I'm a huge producer of our region. It's got a cult-like following. If you're mm-hmm. booking Oceana, Regent, some of those lines where those people have an affinity to the product, you know that they sail a lot and they're booking on board, and you're like, hey, free money just came into my inbox. So for clients who know they're sailing, who um, they want to book an FIT with me, and they book every single time they book, and it's simple for me to do, I will not charge them a fee. Now, the more complex trips that do require um, a lot of Uh, research, thought, back and forth between my operators, you know, people who want really personalized, truly, truly customized experiences. Like I want to have dinner with an author in his castle that's 300 years old. And I want to dress in formal attire and have his wife there and have him bring his historian friend. You know, I mean, if you start getting into things like that, uh, then I charge fees regardless of how many times they've booked with me. So I do use my discretion and it is about the time. Uh, the simplicity, how much they've booked with me. I don't think I have any clients now who just don't book with me. As a matter of fact, I have clients who now email me or text me and say, I want to do this quick like Disney cruise with my grandkids. Do you have time to do this? And I'm like, no, just go book it yourself. (laughs) And they're okay with it. But that's when I do it is the person, the time, the complexity. Yep. Yeah, and that's the same, as I was saying, the same reasons that I waive. So like my big three cruise lines or like I had one case where it's somebody local and they're a part of a large social circle, which the first time that I worked with somebody from that group, it was a super, super easy San Juan trip this June. So it's like, I'll waive it this time. But I even always tell them like, hey, I usually do charge a fee of this amount for this kind of trip. But this time, because of whatever reason I have, I'm going to waive it for you. Uh, This way, they're prepared for the next time because I'm going to hit them with a fee at some point. But hopefully, it gets me some good word of mouth and $50 is free advertising. And he's the type. I do put that too in writing with my clients. And that's a good point, Scott. So when I communicate with my clients about it, whether it's, you know, a new person or clients, I, you know, I just, I say, I'm really excited to get started on your trip. I want you to know that due to whatever, the nature of our relationship, this particular trip, whatever, I've waived my fee of X amount, courtesy of my agency. I'm really looking forward to moving this, you know, to to planning this for you. And if you just say it, matter of fact, whether you're telling them the fee or you want them to know that your time is valuable, but you've waived it, it speaks volumes. Yeah, no, it totally does. And like I, in my travel service agreement for the preferred suppliers, there's still the checkbox for them to acknowledge the fee, but it says because you're booking this cruise line, there is no fee associated with it, but any others would be whatever amount. Uh, So it's builds goodwill because it's showing you that showing them that you're trying to do something good for them. 
Uh, but also preparing them for the future because if that person comes to me and wants to do some, okay. some complex trip to Japan, they're going to be prepared to pay the fee. Yeah. Um, so other types of fees. So we've been talking a lot about non-refundable planning fees, but there are a plethora of other options such as cancellation fees, which we mentioned about a few times, change fees, plan to go fees, concierge fees, concierge fees, like you could probably just come up with the word and add fee to it and we can call it a fee. Um, what types of fees do you charge and what are your thoughts on the kinds that you don't? I do charge a concierge fee and regardless of the size of the booking, I've always done that. I've offered it as a service and a lot of it is tied to uh, restaurant recommendations and reservations. And if you're doing FITs and you're working with a tour operator or a DMC and you're not asking them for the restaurant recommendations, you need to be doing that. And then you look like a rock star to your client because you're not doing anything. <laughs> you're just copying and pasting from an email and you're recommending it to your client. And then you go back to your TO or DMC and you go, okay, my client wants this one, this one, and this one at seven o'clock here, nine o'clock there, and I charge them a fee, mm -hmm. depending on the number of reservations or the length of the trip or whatever it is. So you can do that. Photographer, you want me to coordinate having a photographer for you? That's another example of a concierge fee. So you can build in all sorts of concierge fees. My world cruises uh, that I do, I have two couples that always book the Regent World Cruise every year, and I handle all of the booking of their um, shore excursions and a lot of the details on it. And if any of you have ever been on their website, it's awful. It is so slow. It is so painful. You want to gouge your eyes out with toothpicks after 10 minutes. It's so bad. So I do offer it as a service and charge them. And it's, it's a pretty hefty sum, but again, I'm actually not on there doing the bookings anymore. I learned a long time ago to just send it to my, my in-house uh, contact with the list. <laughs> it does everything yeah. for me, but that's a way that you can charge additional fees. I know that there are agents out there who also will do trip planning services for other agents and they charge fees for that. So that's how they're offsetting their income. Now, before you do that, you really better know that agent and that agent really should know your client inside and out and also your expectations because your standard and expectation may be vastly different. But there's a, there's a ton of ways. I mean, there's also other types of fees, affiliate fees. People are getting into affiliate marketing big time. And, you know, my favorite suitcase, my favorite, you know, eye mask, whatever it is. So mm -hmm. they're, they're using the affiliate commissions to also offset their business expenses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's the, there's a lot of different ways that we can charge fees and make additional money that supports the business overall, um, which kind of pulling us back into cancellation fees. Um, cancellation fees are not anybody's friend. Like they're your friend when you're the one getting paid. Um, and like I've had luck with them of screening out people that I really didn't want to work with anymore. Like I had a habitual cruise canceller. She got so used to COVID's cancellation policies that she expected them to last forever. And then finally, like she started canceling and there was no commission protection, nothing. So I'm like, the next cruise that you book, there's this planning fee. Plus if you cancel the cruise, it's $50 a person. And that just helped persuade her to go somewhere else because I don't need somebody booking with me and canceling every time they book. Well, here, here's a case for change in cancellation fees. If you're, particularly if you're not going to charge a planning fee, let's say you don't charge the planning fee, the client books with you. Okay. And it's, 
you know, uh, a small FIT. They all of a sudden have time has been on their side. They have found time to dedicate to their trip and they start going out and searching for all of these different tours and experiences. And then they come back to you because they're not at final yet. And they go, well, I want to cancel this one and this one because I found this over here. That's fine. It's a cancellation fee. Uh, and that happens a lot, especially with clients who are budget conscious or they don't understand the relationship quite yet, or maybe they're just not a loyal person and they don't appreciate a, a, a service-based business. So by having a change or a cancellation fee, it can protect you and your time and I do see that a lot in a lot of the, the uh, Facebook groups, the travel agent groups where people are posting about, um, I quoted everything, they only booked this portion and then they came back and they booked the final, but then they changed their mind and they wanted to get rid of that second portion because they found something else cheaper over here. So mm -hmm. I do see that. But that is a really good case. And um, I'll tell you, I've had a couple of clients who knew that I charged change and cancellation fees. Actually, it was one client, a couple, and they weren't really my ideal client. And so I was okay if, if I hurt their feelings and they went away. But she went around me because they had canceled uh -huh. one trip. I charged them all the fees. And of course, you know, some of the, the customers will call to get their insurance refunded. If you're like me and you book third-party insurance, that is a lot of money and huge income that you can make. So on one of them, she went around me, called Allianz, canceled. I got the notification. I got the cancellation notice for the cruise and I sent her an invoice. Yeah. You need to pay it. If you don't respond within 48 hours, I'm going to charge your card on file per my terms and conditions. Which that's actually perfect because uh, Amanda just asked um, how we handle this sort of thing because you get a lot of people who like if they want to cancel, they know they can cancel. They just don't pay the cruise and it auto cancels. Um, so how do we get them to pay and having it clearly written in our terms and conditions that we will charge the card on file is the workaround for that. And then if they try to dispute it, we can provide the terms and conditions that said this. And we gave them the warning that if you do not respond within 48 hours with another card, your credit card on file will be the one that's charged. Yeah. And I don't make my cancellation and change fees huge except if I'm doing a really large trip. I mean, it's got to be, you know, a hundred thousand plus in, in dollar value. Then I'll charge a heftier cancellation fee just because of the time that goes into planning that type of trip. But I charge $25 per person per component. Mm -hmm. And it's enough to deter people. Uh, it's also enough to deter those clients who call you again and again and again, like I do have one and I love her. So I'll never get rid of her as a client, even though she's not a super luxe client. I book their whole family, cousins, kids, brothers, sisters, you know, you name it. But she badgers us. I was on the Oceana website and I see that in this cabin, it's cheaper than what I'm paying or it's I want to get this air. Can you find out if I can change my air to this? And so I finally just took a hard and fast stance. I was like, look, Gloria, we'll call and inquire about this, but it's $25. And yeah. she stopped doing it because yeah. she doesn't understand that every time I pick up the phone at her whim, because she's been surfing on the internet and saw something and saw a promo, which I always say, stop watching the promos, they're lies. It's a bunch of lies. There's no such thing as two for one. Like, stop yeah. right now. So yeah, and it, it's, it's an easy way to like just 
break the bad habits of the clients who aren't valuing your time as the professional, um, which the last big thing I want to talk about before we have 10 minutes of questions at the end here, because I'm sure everyone has a bunch. Um, let's talk about Florida. Like yeah. this topic comes up very often when we are talking about charging planning fees because the seller travel verbiage is vague but clear about who can charge fees. So how do we work around that? So there are no explicit prohibitions against charging fees. If a travel agent has their own seller of travel number, posted or otherwise, there's no conflict with charging a service fee in any of the seller of travel states, so long as the required processes are followed by each state. I want to say, and I should have said this, I am not an attorney, okay? I'm not giving you legal advice. However, we have gone back and forth with our legal team about fees. We get lots of questions from our members about it. And we continue to go back with this statement is that as long as you have your credentials and you're following the procedures, there is nothing that would prohibit you from charging fees. Now, here's a personal thought of mine, and I actually haven't dove into it, but I have thought about this and I need to actually speak with our legal team about it and also our CPA, is the planning fee part is really a service. It's not travel. Uh -huh. And so that's in my mind, do not do anything unless you speak with somebody about this. But I'm just thinking from a common sense and logical standpoint, why would fees be considered anything other than any other service that you're providing, a cleaning service, another type of service, car washing service, a consulting yep. service? So that's something that's been weighing on my mind because I knew this was coming up and I've thought about it in the past and it escaped me. But if you delineate it, is there a workaround? I don't know. I don't have the answer. It's something that I've thought about and I'm going to explore it. And, uh, but I do know now that if you live in Florida, you can charge fees. If you have clients in Florida or California, as long as you have your uh, credentials. So now for the full seller travel, but what about for the people that are under host that have the no. TI number? Okay, no, if you are, under a host agency and you are leveraging their seller of travel credentials and you have an exemption, then you need to run your fees through your host agency. Let me just tell you, what they're trying to do with the host agencies is prevent you from one, compromising their credentials and ensuring that the, you know, that the letter of the law is is adhered to, and then of course it's revenue for them. You have a revenue split. So, you know, there are multiple factors at play, but I'm hosted, I live in Florida. Now, yeah. I've been hosted by a California host, a Texas host, a Florida host, I eventually got my own seller of travel credentials in Florida because I wanted to ensure that I could keep all of my credentials. And the other thing that I tell everybody too, if you're hosted and you don't run your fees through your host agency, then talk to your E&O insurance provider to just see if there's any like weird nuance that you haven't thought about. If it's not connected to the package, what happens if there's a chargeback or the host agency has to step in or there's an incident or whatever that is. But um, if you're hosted, you're leveraging their credentials. Yes. So unless your host agency has a specific policy that says, we just don't want you to do that. It could just be their policy. 
But I will tell you that host agencies are not set up for plan to go fees. That would be an administrative nightmare and such a huge expense for them to take in fees and then figure out who they have to refund them back to. Yeah. And with just outside of the host thing, like if you're just an independent advisor doing your own fees because of your own seller travel, like that plan to go is a mess to get into. Um, which before we break into questions, I see people putting questions in the chat. Please put them in the Q&A uh, so that I can track them as we're going through everything. Um, but I'll, the last- I'll, Go ahead. Oh, oh no, go ahead. I was gonna say, I just saw Harmony's comment in the chat and you are required to have seller of travel if you reside or sell to. So you could live in North Carolina, but if you're selling to people in Florida, you're required to have credentials in Florida. So that's how the seller of travel works. You know, I talk to our team all the time about this. The law for travel is so muddy. It is so gray. It is so varied from state to state. And it's frustrating and it creates problems in our industry. I don't know how to solve it, but I can tell you that we're working hard, at least on my side, to provide you with the recommendations that are the most conservative. It's kind of like when people ask us, do you need to put your credentials on your website or, you know, in your communication, et cetera? So um, the reason why uh, we have our seller of travel guideline user guide is because of Jackie Friedman at Nexion, the president of Nexion. She's like, you have to create this, Sheila. You have to do this because so many people are doing it wrong. So we err on the side of caution, conservatism, where you put your uh, Sheila's travel, an independent affiliate of Nexion, and then the credentials yeah. there. So the displaying of the credentials in the appropriate places is also important in your terms, your website. I even have them in my email signature. Yep. Yeah, like I have mine posted basically anywhere that has a client contact, just uh, CYA, mm -hmm. uh, which um, I want to go ahead and give us a few minutes of question time. Um, so we do have some in here and I'll try to catch the ones that went into the chat, um, which I know we talked about some of these. So I'm going to hop around a little bit here. Uh, one from Kimberly is when do you when do you introduce your cancellation fees? Is it in the very beginning of your in your terms and conditions? Uh, and then can you justify fees when they start making changes? It's in my terms and conditions. We have an entire cancel and Scott knows he uses our uh, legal. It's there's an entire section on changes and cancellations. And that's where yes. you have it in your terms yeah. and conditions. And um, just kind of talking about my own workflow. So not only is it in the terms and conditions that live on its own little website, but when somebody's doing the agreement, I call it my, my travel service agreement, they're checking a box that says they agree to the fees. They check a box saying that they agree to buying insurance. They check a box that they agree to the terms and conditions that are listed on the terms and conditions page. Um, so I'm getting affirmative responses from them so that they can't say, I didn't know this because- right. I know nobody reads terms and conditions, but you affirm to it. Like we all live by that standard across every technology that we use. And, and one of the things too, uh, I think it was Kimberly that asked that. So when I have a client who comes in and wants to make a change or a cancellation, I reply back to them in writing. Well, first of all, I always make them put it in writing, but I reply back to them. I understand that you want to change X, Y, and Z, or you want to cancel X, Y, and Z, and that you are aware of our fees outlined in our terms that you agreed to when you deposited this trip. And I just make it matter of fact. It doesn't have to be unfriendly. It's just a restatement. And then I just say, do you still want to proceed? Let me know. Yeah. 
yeah, the reminder of the speed. Like if you make this change, like if somebody wants me to reprice out their cruise because they're going to save $50, all right, well, I'm charging you $25 a person. So that $50 difference isn't there. And I, I warn all my cruise clients, like I will make a, a price change on a cruise if it's a dramatic change, but I'm not going to be hunting down $10, $20 changes for them. This is talking like if it drops a thousand bucks because that is a significant amount of money that I would do the same way. Like if I, I, I allow one price reduction, but I will not monitor. And yep. beyond that, it's a fee every time they want to me to even call to find out if it can be done or if the price is really the price. Yep. All right. Uh, any other questions that you all have for either one of us before we break for the day? I think we covered everything. Oh, let me read Rebecca's here again. And I'll put my, um, I'm, I'm happy to have offline conversations. I don't know if this is okay, Scott, I'll put my email in the chat. And if you guys want to reach out, feel free. Yep. And um, I'll say this again in a second, but I'll be following up with everyone with the recording for the session once I get it from Zoom and get everything uploaded to the website um, so that you'll have access to it later on. Um, if you haven't already registered for the new chapter website, it is astacfl.com, which I will put that in the chat for you here. Um, and we can get the recording in there. I'll also include Sheila's information. So if you have any direct questions for her, um, you can reach out to her directly. Otherwise, thank you, everybody. And I don't give out that email very often, okay? Not many people have it. <laughs> so. Just everyone that's in the chapter that watches this in their future now. Um, I'm giving my love to Central Florida here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're getting a direct line here. So use it wisely. Don't abuse it. Um, if you are uh, watching this as a recording, feel free to email Sheila um, or email me if you have any questions about this. I've been a proponent for travel fees for a while. Um, talking to a lot of different advisors about it over the years, helping them get set up. Um, but also, you all will be getting a survey for this. Please let us know your thoughts. I can't do good programming unless we get feedback. Uh, so I definitely could use your thoughts on everything. But otherwise, everyone, thank you so much for coming in. Sheila, one more thought? I think we have a hand raise from Joy. Oh, Joy, yes. Good, good catch. Can I allow you to talk? I don't know. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Joe, you can unmute if you want. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been really helpful and informative. Oh, I'm so glad. You know what, guys? Be brave. Sorry. It's okay. You can go out there and you can do it. And if you don't want to do it, it's okay too. Um, but I think that once you dip your toe in the water and you become more confident in speaking about it and charging fees, uh, you'll, you'll realize it was a great decision for your business. Well, thank you again, Sheila and everyone else for joining and enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. Bye everyone. Bye.